Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel and this series where we aim to take electronic circuit concepts and demonstrate them in a practical manner to make what seems as an abstract idea or an abstract theme in the field of electronics and electrical engineering and make it more tangible and easy to understand. This video will be taking a look at one of the most basic concepts and circuits and it's how to measure resistance using a multimeter and what short circuits actually are. But before diving into these concepts, let's clarify the tools that we will be using today in the workbench. In this tutorial, we have three main equipments or components that we will be using, and they are multimeters, breadboards, and resistors. Remember, a multimeter is an instrument designed to measure electric current, voltage, and usually resistance. In this video, we will be using the multimeter as an ohmmeter to measure the resistance. Breadboards are boards used for prototyping with electronics and testing circuit designs, and it's a tool that you will use a lot when connecting components in a circuit. If you're new to using breadboards, I would highly encourage you to watch my last video on this topic. Let's also take this opportunity to talk about some circuit terminology that we have mentioned in our last video. A closed circuit is a circuit that is completely connected and current can flow through it in such a way that it can have a path back, the current can have a path back to where it came from. Whereas an open circuit is a circuit that is open because there isn't a connection between all the components in the circuit. Now let's talk about how we can measure resistance. Many components are labeled or color-coded to identify their value and function. One of those components are resistors. Resistors use colored bands to quickly identify a resistor's resistive value and its percentage of tolerance, as seen in the table in the slide. Each color or colored band represents a value. In this example, the resistor has four colored bands. The first three colors represent the resistance. These three colors can be read through by looking at the first two bands first, that are here shown by the color brown and the color black. These two colors together represent the number 10. The third band represents another quantity called the multiplier. The multiplier represents the power you need to multiply the first two resistor digits that were presented by the first two color bands. Since the multiplier here is red, we would need to multiply the 10 by 100, and this would give us 1000 ohms, which can also be called a 1 kilo ohm. The last color band in this resistor is the golden color band, and it represents the tolerance. This tolerance value is the percentage of error in the resistance of the resistor, or how much more or less you can expect a resistor's actual measured resistance to be from its stated resistance. So let's jump over to the workbench and look at how we can measure resistance with the help of a multimeter. First things first, we have a breadboard, and in that breadboard we have a resistor that's connected between two nodes. So when we zoom in into the resistor, we can see that the resistor has three colored bands as well as a tolerance band. For the three colored bands, we have a brown band, a black band, and an orange band. The brown and black represent the number 10, and the multiplier here is 1000. So the total resistor's value is 10k, 10,000 ohms. As for the tolerance, we have a 5% tolerance, and we know that because we see a golden color band at the uh, edge of this resistor. Now that we know that the value of the resistor is about 10,000 ohms with a 5% tolerance, let's configure the multimeter. We have to ensure that we are pointing the dial to the correct settings in the multimeter. Since we're trying to measure the resistance, we will be pointing the dial of the multimeter to the quadrant that is related to the resistor values. And we can see that there are multiple settings starting with 200 ohms to 2000 ohms to 200 to 20000 ohms to 200000 ohms and since we're measuring a value of resistance which is about 10k we expect that the 20k 
setting is the enough setting. However, let's start smaller and see what happens when we connect the, the multimeter with the dial setting a little bit lower than the resistor's value. Kindly note that the black wire should always be connected to the COM port, the common port, and the red wire should be connected based on the thing that we're trying to measure. And in our case, we're trying to measure the resistance, so we will be connecting our red wire to this terminal of the multimeter or this port of the multimeter. So let's turn on the multimeter and see what happens when we try to measure the resistance across the resistor. So what I will do is I will take one of the ends of the uh, leads that I have and the other end of the leads that I have and connect it to the same node of the resistor, to so each end of the resistor. And as I can see from the multimeter's uh, display, I'm getting a one. This one indicates that the range that I've chosen is incorrect and uh, it's actually a smaller range than what the resistor, resistor's value is. Similarly, when I turn up the dial to 2K, since the value of the resistor is about 10,000 ohms, it would display a 1 over here. So I'm, a, I'm still very uh, in a very low range. I would need to turn up the dial one more time. Okay. So as we can see, when we put the dial into the correct mode, we get 9.9 .9 kilo ohms. This is because the, the difference between the resistor's value and its actual value is because of the tolerance, as well as the resistance that is in the lead wires. But you can see that it's very close to the, resistive, the resistor's value. Now that we've understood how we can measure resistance using a multimeter, let's take a look at a concept known as short circuit. What is a short circuit and what does it, when does it happen? When do you short circuit a circuit? A short circuit happens when a path of low resistance is connected to a component, which usually happens or sometimes happens by mistake. The resistor shown in the slide is the intended path for the current. However, the wire going around it is the short. Therefore, a current is diverted away from its intended path. And this sometimes comes with damaging results. The wire shorts out the resistor by providing a low resistance path for the current. Maybe this concept is too abstract, so let's take a more practical example to explain it. So rather than talking in terms of voltage and resistance, let's take a more practical example. Let's say we have a water source that is connected to a clogged pipe. And let's say between this clogged pipe and another pipe, which is much cleaner and it, it is free of any debris, is a valve that has been closed by accident. So where do you think the water, in this case, would flow through? Of course, it's going to flow through the path of least resistance. And in our case, it's the wire or the pipe that has been connected by accident and has the least amount of resistance or least amount of debris or it's the least clogged out of the pipes. So in this case, it will flow through the wire or the clean pipe. Similarly, for the circuit, if we have current flowing through the circuit, the current will flow through the path of least resistance. Since a resistance of 1 kilo ohm is much greater than the resistance of a wire, current will flow through the wire rather than the path with the resistance of 1K. So let's jump to the workbench and see how short circuits are at play. What happens when we connect a wire which has a lower resistance than the 1 kilo ohms resistor in parallel to it? What happens when we short this resistor with a wire. We expect for, a, for the multimeter to display a value of zero resistance. So let's take a look at what happens when we connect each ends of the, of the leads of the multimeter across these two nodes with the resistor shorted with this wire. 
And as we can see, we can see that we get a value of zero resistance displayed in the multimeter, and that is because of the short circuit. Thank you for watching. In our next video, we will be taking a look at the different circuit connections, such as series and parallel connections. So stay tuned for that.